All right, so first thing out of the box is the manual. I'm gonna open that up. Get your antenna. An extra page help you with the option part. So, yeah, yeah. It's just telling you when you have extra Velcro, cut it off so it doesn't hang off and hit the body. Sticker kit. And now the manual. And then the window mask. I don't know if you can see, but if you look beneath the car, they actually got the mirror reflection off of it. It's pretty cool. Setup sheet. So. So the first couple pages shows you which parts from which bags go to the other parts. So you don't get confused later on. And just a basic instruction manual. Nothing too crazy. And then the exploded view of the car. So. Alright. Now the body. Definitely a different looking body, which isn't a bad thing. There's it looks like it's gonna perform really well. They tested all three, tested the MP10, the MP90 Evo, and they made this body. And this body seems to work the best, just from what I was told. So, definitely get this painted up and test it. Chassis. This is the first Kiosha chassis that I've had that has actually engraving in it with the car. So, it's pretty cool. So here are the shocks. These are not the longer shocks. The car comes with the stock MP10, uh, 50 millimeter. Like it all, it's all stock shock towers and everything. So I will be testing this. Most likely, do put on the longer shock towers and shocks later on. So here's the first bag, actually, the diffs <clears throat> and the diff cases. You got your center drive shafts. Got the two trays there. Actually, open this one already. It's the battery tray. Both of the battery trays. So here's the front end, you got your shock tower, knuckle, A-arm, bumper, pretty much everything to build the front end, and then you just attach it to your diff housing, where your diff is. So, I will go on later in the video and explain the option parts I'm going to start out using, and why I'm going to use them. So, then here's the rear end, wing stay, A-arm, all that fun stuff. Shock towers, wheel wrench, and then here's the servo saver. Comes pre assembled from the factory. Got your wing. Here is the rear hubs, turnbuckles, looks like a chassis brace, a ESC plate, There's a bunch of stuff in there. Fourth bag. And here's the Last and final bag for the car. It's the center motor mount. Looks like the center differential case. Some other little stuff. Top plate for the steering. So.
right, so I got my car done here. Uh, you seen me building it super fast. I wish it actually could build that fast, but it just can't. So I'm gonna go through some tips on this car, some tricks that I did. So start by removing this body. Did the one color. And for the batteries, I just put two shorty 4900s in there right now. Uh, when I go to the track, I'm going to put the 5800 batteries in there to test and the 6300 stick pack from ProTech. Uh, I, just, I just don't have any stick packs right now. So start the front end here. Option parts that I've used, I'll explain all of them. So I got the longer sh shock towers and longer shocks front and rear. More droop, more up travel. Overall, just should be better in the rough. Have not been able to try it yet. Haven't been able to get to the track during this COVID. Uh, titanium turnbuckles. Make car light as I can. I will put a titanium screw kit on the car when it comes out. Uh, hard arms, front and rear, less flex, just like 10 scale. And got the aluminum caster blocks, 17 and a half. 2.1 sway bar. So. Then I have my gray front springs, my light blue rears, caster block. The reason why I run the aluminum over the plastic is I can trust this a lot more not to break during a run. The flex is the same, so you can go to the same corner, have the same exact amount of steering each time. Don't have to worry about it changing. And then here, take my wheel off. I do a little trick that I learned from Mick Crawdett, uh, the UK team manager for Kyosho. And what he likes to do is have about three knuckles or four knuckles complete with different cash boxes and everything. So he puts a longer uh, screw here and then just puts a nut on top of it. So then you can just take this nut off, take these two off, and he can change this entire piece without having to put, without having to worry about the flathead screw stripping. And this overall just makes it a lot easier to work on your car too. I've been doing it since February. So, I got avid bearings throughout the entire car. Got my hobby wing motor and ESC, Protec batteries, Protec servo. So, and with the steering plates, I use an 8 mil turnbuckle wrench to tighten them. And that way, I don't have to worry about them coming loose. And every screw, anything that could be locked tight at all the pills. I spent probably a solid two hours getting everything ready so I could just build it, don't have to open up bags. Definitely sped up the process other than taking two hours to get it all ready, but it was definitely worth it. So with the rear end here, I have the aluminum wing stay. This wing doesn't flex, a 2.3 rear sway bar here. I have the aluminum hubs, hard A arms, and then out here for the hex, uh, on my nitro buggy, I do run wider hexes, but to start with this car, I'm going to run the narrow. And for the spacing here, I uh, actually grind one of the two mils down to 1.5 so my hub moves freely. If you don't do that, your hub binds and then kind of lose grip and car doesn't work right. So another cool thing from Kyosho, I won't be able to see it, but they have these little plates in here. Right where my fingers out, I don't know if you can see it, but so you put the wire in there and it covers it up really nicely. Don't have to worry about it going up into the spur gear or into the drive shaft back here. So yeah, I can't wait to go out to the track and see what the car does. So thanks for watching and new video coming tomorrow.